I'ma keep it a bean. Stick to the script every scene. This from last year, but they clean. Say to say, I'ma take something else, but it's winning team. Charlie Sheen. Fam gang, the regime. I'm from Piney Green. What's good, Shell Tron here? You can call me Shells, and I'm back at again with a brand new video. And I'ma keep it a bold bray biscuit. The madman actually did it. Dave, Rev Rule, Marty Herney, they went seven for seven in the 2020 NFL draft on defensive players. The very first ever virtual draft for the NFL, and we are also the very first team in the modern era to use all of our draft picks on defensive players, and I am not mad about it. Our biggest problem last year was defense, and we focused on that. We may not win a ton of games this year, or even go 500, but I think we're gonna be building a, a foundation and a place to start and move to go forward with this team by focusing on our defense, become more of a defensive-minded team until we find our franchise quarterback for the future. We have seen teams succeed with having elite defenses and having, you know, a, a, a game manager kind of quarterback. We saw that kind of team in the Super Bowl this year. He just went up against the best quarterback in the league, and, you know, they he saw what happened. The point is, going for all defense seemed to be the very best plan we could have gone for. In the seventh round of the draft, the Panthers went ahead and got Stanley Thomas Oliver, a corner out of FIU, and this makes our draft three defensive linemen, and four players who are in the secondary, four defensive backs. This is really good. Stanley is six foot. He's about 200 pounds, 190 is kind of, and he ran a 4-4-8 in the combine. He has some pretty decent stats in his three years at FIU. He started out as a receiver, did that for one game, one year, and then he got switched over to corner. And that makes him a kind of interesting prospect where on one hand, he has the experience of a receiver, so he knows how defenses think, and he knows like how the quarterbacks are be looking at the play and how receivers are gonna be moving around, maybe has better play recognition. But as a corner, he is also kind of raw there. He only has two years experience at FIU. They don't really play the best competition in their conference, but as a seventh round pick in a position of need for the Panthers, it's not all that bad to get a guy you can say he has some really good physical traits and a unique, I guess, perspective on the position that you can just see what sticks. You, you, you pick him up, bring him in, see what sticks, see what he has on him, and you can just go from there, move forward. He might be a great special teams player for the first one or two years. That's cool with me, but for all that stuff about, you know, being a seventh round pick, you don't have to have that much pressure on you. There's not like a huge amount of expectations on you. There were some things that I noticed when I watched some of his game film that stuck out to me a lot. And one isn't all that bad. One's just a, it's an observation. The other thing, my second point, is extremely, extremely concerning. It's a huge red flag for me. I'll get that here in a second. The first thing is how he plays in coverage. First off, you may see him play in the press a little bit. He played in the press sometimes at FIU, but he is not a corner who will be jamming anyone at the line of scrimmage. He will not be fighting anyone in the first five yards. He'll give you a one-hand punch and then go back into coverage. He's not going to be sitting there, you know, rerouting you, getting you off your break. Even though he has some really good speed, he will not stick man-to-man -man with the receiver, mirror him, stay in his hip pocket. He's more of an off kind of corner. He plays off man. He might actually be better off playing uh, cover three, honestly, but that's not a bad thing. I still like what he brings to the table and what his potential could be moving forward. But like I mentioned, my second observation about Stantley is that he has no interest in playing the run. I'm not saying he can't tackle. I'm saying if there is a run play, he does everything in his power to make sure he is not even anywhere near the vicinity of a run play. There are multiple plays I watched, and when I say multiple, I mean actually 90% of the run plays that I watched him on. He would see it was a run. It wasn't play action. It wasn't some kind of uh, zone read or whatever. He saw the running back have the ball in his hand, and he did everything to hand fight with the receiver, saying, okay, I'm getting blocked over here. The plays on this side of the field, you would not even see him cross into the frame at all. The running back would come toward him, and he's somewhere else doing something else. He was not making an effort. You can tell what effort is, and you can see when a guy wants to be part of a play when he's fighting, even if you can't get there. If you can't get there, but you're showing effort to get there, you can tell when a guy is showing that and when a guy is trying not to be in that action. And Stanley Thomas Oliver did not want that action. And that's a huge problem for me 
for a defense coming off of two straight years of having bad run defense. And what gets lost a lot of times with our run D stats, we focus on the D line and linebackers. But what gets lost is that the corners and sometimes even the safeties who come down, they didn't set an edge. They weren't really trying to tackle. There's a lot of shoelace tackles, arm tackling going on on the boundary. And running backs would just bounce the, the run outside. We didn't have guys who would set the edge and contain. This man will not do that. And we were getting killed on outside runs. I hope it's something that we can get Phil Snow and we can get uh, Rev Rule to coach out of him. This is a huge red flag for me. I need people who are going to tackle because we need to stop the run. I know we have Brady, we have Breeze, and we have Matt Ryan in our division. But if you can't stop the run, you're not going to win very many games. It's simple as that. It really is as simple as that. But overall, as a seventh round pick, I actually like Stanley Thomas Oliver. I think he'll do well here. He has to just figure out how to be brave against these running backs. That's all it is. Find it in your heart, brother. Find it in your heart. Be brave. That's all I thought for you, though. Stanley Thomas Oliver, I'm glad he's here. We may be able to mold this man into a pretty impactful piece on defense in the years to come. That's my thoughts on it, though. What are your thoughts? Do you like him? Do you not like him? Have you watched any of his film? Let me know all your thoughts in the comments below. And you already know what to do with that like button. Cheers to you. Appreciate the chance. Being told y'all I been the man. Being told y'all I had the gift. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Real ones gonna recommend. Count this as another win.